to you and here's to you and here's to Blessing to you both. Good day, family, fellow clergy, and friends of our departed brother and priest, the Reverend Emmanuel Sinclair Jones. I greet you at this time as we have gathered either physically or virtually to give God the thanks and praise for the life, love, work, and witness of his faithful servant Sinclair. I had the good fortune of meeting Father Sinclair, who, by the way, is the brother of one of my uncles, the late Herbert Jones, in November 2018, when I was the rector of the Church of the Holy Trinity and had the good pleasure of hosting a service of praise and thanksgiving to the Almighty God for enabling him to reach the milestone of four score years and ten, that of his 90th birthday. On that significant and joyous occasion, I recognize Father Sinclair to be a very amicable, modest, erudite, and gracious individual, and certainly one well-loved by the many members of his family and his friends, who shared in that special moment of his life. I therefore join you in thanking God for his long life, through which he was able to positively impact the lives of many as he ran the good race and finished his course faithfully. And I also take this opportunity to extend condolences to all of you, the immediate family and close friends, on behalf of the Maxwell family and the clergy of the Diocese of Barbados. May our God, through the presence of his Holy Spirit in your lives, be your comforter at this time of bereavement and endow you with the strength to meet the days ahead. And may our God continue to bless and keep our departed brother as he has been called home to be in the nearer presence of the Almighty God. May he rest in peace. Amen. Hello all. Uh, we decided that in light of the pandemic and us not being able to physically be there to celebrate the life of Uncle St. Clair, we would just put together a short video to share our memories of Uncle St. Clair with you in Trinidad. Um, for me, Uncle St. Clair was probably the closest thing I had to a grandfather, and he always reminded me so much of my own father, Malcolm, um, because he was always so cool, peaceful, he was just, he was just so easygoing, and on my frequent trips to Trinidad, I would always pop in 
and say hi and he was always so inviting he and Auntie Joan were always so inviting and warm to me and that's testimony to the love that he embedded in his own immediate family there in Trinidad and I'm so thankful to have met all of you and we just want you to know that our love and our prayers are with you during this time and I'm very sure that his legacy will live on um, through you guys um, for a long time to come. Good day all. My name is Rosalind. I'm the daughter of the late Herbert Jones. Remembering Emmanuel Sinclair Jones, affectionately known as Uncle Sinclair, to his nieces and nephews. What a fine gentleman. I will always remember his love for family, his love for life, and he has left us a rich legacy. On behalf of my mom, Marjorie Jones, my family, and I, I'd like to wish Auntie Joan, Jennifer, Hayden, Glynis, Bevel, other family and friends, um, our deepest condolences and God's comfort. Uncle Sinclair, or as I call him, Emmanuel, rest in peace. Love always. I treasure the okay. fact that Uncle Sinclair bore such a striking resemblance to my grandfather. And I knew that every time I saw Uncle Sinclair, I was having a glimpse of my grandfather. On behalf of my family and I, I'd like to convey my deepest condolences to Auntie Joan, Jennifer, Hayden, Bevel, and Glynis. Love you all. I am Maggie Jones in Barbados, a niece of Uncle Sinclair. Uncle Sinclair left these shores over 65 years ago to study in Trinidad and never forgot his Bajan roots. My late father, Clyde, always referred to him as his baby brother and was very proud of all his academic achievements and others. Uncle Sinclair maintained the connections with our families on this side by bringing his growing Trinidad family to get to know his, the Bajan family and those were good times. His roots were so deeply embedded that he even returned to Barbados to celebrate his 80th, 90th birthday uh, with his Bajan as well as Trinidad friends and family. Uncle Sinclair has had a long, fruitful and fulfilling life serving his Lord and his community and his legacy will live on through his children and grandchildren. To Auntie Joan, Jennifer, Hayden, Glynis and Bevel, on behalf of my sister Rosie, my brothers Orville, Rodney, Michael and Andrew, I wish to extend our deepest condolences to you all and pray that you will be comforted by your memories of him as time goes by. May he rest in peace. Hello, Auntie Joan, Jennifer, Hayden, Glynis and Bevel. You are all so dear to me. My thoughts and prayers are with you at this time. Uncle Sinclair was a steady rock of the entire family. And we know that for everything there is a season. Psalm 34, 18 reminds us that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed. Psalm 145 reminds us that the Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. Remain close and continue to support each other as you always have done. Real lives pass, memories carry on forever. I love you all. When the road is cold up yonder, 
When the world is called up yonder, when the world is called up yonder, when the world is called up yonder, we'll be there. Rosie, stay close. I love you. Malcolm Jones, nephew from Barbados. It was sad hearing of his passing. He has left many footprints for others to follow and was a true gentleman. He will always be remembered for his love of life and winning smile. These four qualities will always remain in my heart. May God comfort Abby Joan and family during this time. Sincere condolences from my family and may you rest in peace and raise in glory. Hello everyone, I'm Claudette from Barbados. Uncle Sinclair gave love from a heart that was warm and sincere. Hence, he was loved and respected by all. He will be missed and remembered for a long time to come. Rest in peace, loved one. Sincerest condolences to Auntie Joan and family. Thank you. Hi, good morning everyone. Sorry to make this video under such circumstances, but unfortunately due to what's going on globally, it's a bit difficult for everyone to be there to offer their love and support during this time. I first want to express, sorry, on behalf of my family and I, I want to first express our deepest condolences to the immediate family in Trinidad. Um, my Fondest memories of Uncle Sinclair are our conversations on the ride home from university, um, as well as watching wrestling on Monday nights. That was definitely a, a, a privilege uh, during that time. Hi everyone. I echo Kenton's sentiments expressing our condolences to the family, the Jones family in Trinidad and to his friends. Um, I'm one of those persons that Uncle Sinclair has touched my life in the short space of time. He welcomed me and the entire Jones family welcomed me warmly and I was very privileged to have him officiate at our wedding. We will miss you fond dearly, Uncle Sinclair. All of our love to the Jones family in Trinidad. We love you.
Dear family and friends, at the invitation of Auntie Joan and her children, I give this eulogy on the occasion of this Thanksgiving service for the celebration of the life of the Reverend Emmanuel Sinclair Jones, my uncle. In a pre-COVID-19 world, many persons would have traveled into Trinidad and others would have come from various parts of the island for this service. The policies and protocols that the government has put in place to try to stem the spread of the virus have made that type of funeral service impossible. The family has therefore settled for this virtual service. Let me at the outset extend condolences on behalf of myself, my siblings Yvonne, Grace, Felicia Rosito and Philip Ezra, as well as my wife Eleanor Angelo and children Jacqueline Suzanne, David and Adrian to Auntie Joan, the wife of Sinclair Jones, and to his children Jennifer, Hayden, Guinness, and Beryl, as well as his grandchildren on his passing. Emmanuel Sinclair Jones was born in Barbados on 1 November 1928. He was the last of four children born to John Graham Jones and Edith Jones of Eagle Hall, St. Michael. The family would later move to Gozelles Road in Trudebridge, St. Michael. His three siblings, Vivian Eugene Hackett, Herbert Graham Jones, William Clyde Jones, all predeceased him. He spent his early years in Barbados and attended the Wesley Hall Boys Elementary School and the Harson College. He emigrated from Barbados to Trinidad in the late 1940s soon after leaving Harrison College Secondary School to take up a job as a chemist at Carini Limited. Thus began a sojourn in Trinidad and Tobago for close to 70 years. It was in those early years living in Cuba, near to where he worked at Carini, that he met Joan Rock. They were married in 1955 and that union produced four children. The Reverend Sinclair Jones was the patriarch of the Jones Hackett family at the time of his death. He was the husband of Joan Jones, father of Jennifer McComey, Hayden Jones, Glynis Jones, and Bevel Jones, grandfather of six, and uncle of 13 who lived mainly in Barbados and the USA. He also had 11 nieces and nephews on the Rock Spencer side of the family. He was loved, revered, and respected by all in the family for his personal attributes and accomplishments. For he was not only a father who provided for the good development of his family, but also a successful private sector businessman in his role as chemist at Carney Limited for seven years, chief chemist and senior manager executive at Trinidad Cement Limited for 33 years, an active community-minded person where he was involved in the work of a number of civic organizations for many years, including the St. John Ambulance Brigade and the Fraternity of the Masonic Lodge, a business consultant after his retirement from TCL, and a priest in the Anglican Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, where he served at a number of churches, mainly in Cuba and San Fernando. We the Hackett's were fortunate to spend much time with Uncle Sinclair over the years during different stages of his life, as he traveled to Barbados often with his family and spent many of those vacations at our home in Bridgetown. In turn, many of us periodically visited Trinidad and benefited from the hospitality of him and his family. After some of us relocated to New York, USA, he and his wife, Auntie Joan, would travel on vacation to Brooklyn and Mount Vernon, where some of us resided. Those occasions were full of fun-loving activities and helped to solidify the bonds of friendship and family. He was invariably present for many of our major family achievements, either by in-person visits, telephone calls, or the sending of well wishes in cards. For me personally, Uncle Sinclair was one of my mentors and was particularly helpful and supportive of me during several stages of my life. It may seem strange to some if I say on an occasion such as this that this was not always the case, although I will need to add a quick addendum by saying thanks to my father. 
My dad, who had successfully agitated for his entry into Harrison College during the years of inequitable treatment of local blacks in Barbados, was obsessed with Uncle Sinclair's outstanding intellect and academic success, and he wanted to ensure that his son followed in Uncle Sinclair's footsteps. Thus, a frequent comment in my household when I was growing up was, Son, you must be more like your Uncle Sinclair. This became an irritant to me during my early years. After I grew older, however, I came myself to realize and to respect Uncle Sinclair's tremendous attributes, and I found myself doing many things to emulate him. This was particularly so during the period that I studied at the University of the West Indies at St. Augustine and spent much time at his home in Claxton Bay. So I'm one of those who is thankful for his life and the role that he played in my own personal, academic, and professional development. Uncle Sinclair lived a full life. Throughout his 92 years, he was honest, a strict disciplinarian who was committed to his family, friends, and work dedicated, very punctual for any activity, and serious, but one who enjoyed a good joke and was full of laughter. Uncle Sinclair also loved to travel, and the last occasion was a visit to Barbados in November 2018 at his request, where he celebrated his 90th birthday among many family members and friends. It was an unforgettable day spent with him, and I'm reminded by Auntie Joan how much he enjoyed that occasion. We shall miss him. May say his soul and those of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We will continue our course until by our call. We are united most of our people who will give us life. Our Lord.
Father, grandfather, priest, educator, and the list can go on and on. We at this time will have the tribute live and recorded, and then we will see the rest of the city. Can you be seated at this time for the tribute? He preached a few years ago. 
when he spoke of making every day count rather than counting the days. And this is exactly how he lived his life. He enjoyed every minute spent with family and friends. Just before coming here, I was checking the live stream, and there are about 275 people that are following this service. And this is a testament to the impact he has had on so many lives. His legacy and will will survive in the, in the interactions he has had with each and every one of us. Today is indeed a difficult day. In the Book of Wisdom, it is written, in the eyes of the wives, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. But we, we are not the unwise, for as believers we know that death in this earthly life marks the beginning of a new life in Christ. Death starts a new life in the Lord as he goes from earth to eternal life. It is in that belief we, as a family, shall take comfort. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have paid dinner to you inside. This circuit. We have a dearly departed brother, Sinclair Jones, who later became to be referred to as Reverend Emmanuel Sinclair Jones, made a tremendous contribution to the life and witness of the Methodist community in this part of God's vineyard. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. According to Psalm 116 and verse 15, Brother Sinclair Jones was not born a man, but rather he became one. Having been nurtured in Christianity, he allowed his faith to forge his freedom. Brother Jones equipped himself with God-given aptitudes to embrace his role in the church, the home, and the world, and shared emotional, spiritual, and cultural opportunities for growth and development that improved the quality of lives of the persons with whom he encountered on his sojourn. Brother Jones' life was mirrored as a solid witnessing tool to cajole people into seeking Jesus Christ into their lives or into their hearts. He accomplished this feat based on spiritual laws found in God's word. Being the disciplinarian he was, he served the Methodist church fearlessly. Our brother served the church with distinction at most of the decision-making levels. Mr. Jones became an accredited local preacher in 1969 and served with distinction until he left to join his wife in the Anglican community. For a number of years, Brother Jones also served the Trinidad Methodist Circuit as circuit steward, where he represented us on many committees. He also served as secretary of the Methodist Trust of Trinidad and Tobago for a number of years, which is the stellar decision-making body of the church for all legal matters. The constitution of the Methodist Church was meticulously studied by our brother, and he pursued the work of the church by fiercely following its dictates. Up until death, he could be sought for advice on the history of the Methodist Church. Men find true manhood only by serving the Savior. 
he will surely be missed for his rewarding ministry to mankind as he served his church and community with distinction and brought others to experience the love of Jesus Christ. Brother Jones's life was one of dedication and service to God, humanity and Christianity, and we thank God for molding him in that direction. We thank God for having been acquainted with Brother Sinclair Jones. He will surely be missed. We wish to extend our condolences to the members of his family, and they can be assured that our prayers and support are with them at this time. We bid farewell to our brother, and we pray that his soul finds everlasting rest. Father, in thy gracious keeping, Leave me now, thy servant sleeping. May your soul be at rest. God bless you. Good morning, my family in Christ. I am the Reverend Alan Jones from Barbados. I am the nephew of Father Emmanuel Jones, who I know as Uncle Sinclair. Today, I feel honored and humbled to be delivering this tribute to him. Truth to tell, I would have wished to be doing this if I had to, at a time far in the future. But our lives are in the hands of God, who has placed us here for a purpose and a time, which when fulfilled, he then calls us back to himself. For this reason, while I am pained and saddened at my loss, the knowledge that he fully lived God's purpose is consoling. And so this separation from him for a while is more bearable because I know it allows him to enter into the nearer presence of Almighty God and to continue God's purpose for him there. I am very proud of and inspired by many aspects of his life. But my special memories of him are captured in the hymn, A Charge to Keep, I Have, which have special meaning for my relationship with him. Grand Grand, his mother, introduced me to this hymn many years ago when she told me that this was the text of his first sermon when, as a teenager, he entered the lay ministry of the Methodist Church in Barbados. At the time, it was just good information about an uncle who lived overseas. But as I got to know him better and to interact with him, the lyrics of that hymn helped me to understand, appreciate, and even wish to emulate his passion for service and his deep commitment to sharing with others through the gift of teaching. Indeed, in the second stanza, I can hear him now committing himself to God in the words, to serve the present age my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. Uncle Sinclair devoted his life and energy to serving God, and thus he prepared himself for the good account which I am sure he is now able to give to his maker. Uncle Sinclair has discharged the responsibility he undertook several years ago. He fought the good fight and has now finished the course there is now laid up for him treasure in heaven. To all who mourn their loss, but especially to you, Auntie Joan, 
and Jennifer and Hayden and Dennis and Bevel do accept the condolences of the Barbadian Jones family extended as it is and our prayerful support for you at this time as together we grieve our loss. May his soul rest in peace. Good morning, my family. personal, fleeting interactions we have all had with you over the years. Whether it was hearing a hearty laugh from one of your jokes, that gleeful expression when sneaking you an extra chocolate from under the watchful gaze of Grandma, enjoying a hearty sip of a favorite scotch, being thoroughly entertained watching Monday and Friday night wrestling, engaging conversations while dropping one of us to work, or dutifully closing the house gate as we depart. The list goes on, and we'll pull out our heart strings as we remember you in quiet refreshment. You have been a great example to all of us from seeing you achieve your career goals, your never-ending desire to learn and provide mentorship, actively prioritizing God and family in your life with a humble, careful, and loving spirit. Beyond these traits, we also saw firsthand your resilience and profound strength when times got hard. Enduring several procedures and treatments while still being true to yourself, letting your kind nature shine through until the end. You are a warrior and true inspiration, and you will never be alone as you live on in each of our, in each of our hearts. Sip in paradise, Grandma. We love you.
God, we remember before you today your servant, Emmanuel Sinclair Jones. And we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you will receive him more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Who sit for readings of Holy Scripture?
a reading from the Word of God, written in Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 through 19. This, then, is what I pray, kneeling before the Father, from whom every family, whether spiritual or natural, takes its name. Out of his infinite glory, may he give you the power through his spirit. For your hidden self to grow strong, so that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. And then, planted in love and built on love. You will, with all the saints, have strength to grasp the breadth and the length, the height and the depth, until knowing the love of Christ, which is beyond all knowledge, you are filled with the utter fullness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand and say the charge to keep and we have.
the one coming into the world. The gospel of Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable unto you, O Lord, for strength and glory be one. Amen. On behalf of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, I extend sincerest condolences to our sister Joan and the children, of course, grown, grown men and women, and extended family. Our sincerest condolences or prayerful and other forms of support during these days of adjusting to life without our brother Sinclair, who himself was maybe small or medium in stature, but very huge in heart, in love, in dedication, in principle, in discipline, in so many ways. Our brother served the church in many capacities, culminating with the sacred priesthood. We thank God for his diligent service over the years, and we thank Joan and the family for their unstinted support of his efforts. Similarly, we commend our brother this morning to Almighty God. Sinclair or Emmanuel Sinclair Jones, priest of the Church of God, we commend him to Almighty God for his goodness and mercy, and we pray that his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed may rest in peace. I have been drawn to Psalm 8, the following verses. What is man? that thou art mindful of him, and the Son of Man, that thou dost care for him. You have made him a little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. I find that I was drawn to it because Sinclair was a man of high regard. High regard for a number of things. The gift of life, his wife and family, the church, and a long list, all of which begins for him or began for him with Almighty God, his love for God. So that in seeking to commend him to God, we seek to align the quality of life that he lived with that which he displayed in, well, at least the time that I knew him, and of course, that did not just begin then. All of his life, I would venture to say, so Psalm 8 celebrates the status of human beings, highly valued and favored by Almighty God, given quality, standing, and purpose, 
and by our own baptism, wherein we were made the child of God, member of Christ, and inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. High status. And our brother embraced that kind of standing, that quality of being, that sense of being and purpose. And in the psalm, there is that sense that the image of God was conveyed to humanity. In other words, some commentators parallel it to the Genesis passage, being made in the image and likeness of God. Humanity is valuable, and our brother begins to treat with you in that way. Now, all of that has its purpose and means, yet there is a problem. The problem is, having been possessed and seized of this status, humanity has continued to make these different and strange choices which interferes with his, his or her relationship with God. And so there is a breakdown. There is a need for redemption. There is a need for repentance. There is a need for newness and renewal. There is a need to come back to God. So we have had this status of being made a little lower than the angels. But very often we push ourselves down the ladder of things. And we tend to hide or block, if we will, the divine image. And we do not come out of it with the quality that we ought to. And our dear brother Sinclair was a man who stuck to his task. I would accuse his scientific mind. Things function in a particular order with a certain sequence. And when those things were not forthcoming, he would take it very seriously. He would be very put out. And indeed, I suppose, I, I heard about some of these things regularly enough, so I could imagine how our sister Joan would have heard of them multiple times, and probably would have said, all right, Sinclair, take it easy. <laughs> and he might have taken it easy for a while, because you see, we gotta, we got to get it right. And I'm, I'm putting, I'm laying that on the fact that if God has given us the status and being, then we ought to at least aspire towards it. Even if we might not yet attain it, but we ought to be moving ourselves up to keep on par with what has happened. This is what really drew me because I thought this psalm is for saying something to what I could say as a witness of him in his stewardship and in delivery of things. Today, the world celebrates a day against trafficking in human persons. A most disgusting act in lowering the dignity of humanity. But it is as bad an act as lowering the dignity of persons in our speech, by our actions, by the way we relate, in the church, in the community, on the street, wherever else. And indeed, you could see our brother Sinclair not being a part, not wanting to have anything to do with that kind of arrangement. So then, friends, God expects us to make right choices. Right choices to love Him and to love our neighbors. To share love and peace. To be kind and gentle and peaceful and patient 
and have self-control and, and, and a long list. And all of those things come together to raise us up to that which he has bestowed upon us. So there, there is that. And there's a second thing. Our brother Sinclair believed. He believed in God and he believed in the processes that God, that was, let's say, laid out leading to the approach to God. In our uh, opening sentences, we have a sentence which reads as follows. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that we might be that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Now that's a principle. And what you do with the principle like that, you either believe it or you leave it alone. Now I'm bringing this to you because I want to make a plug for the vaccination. If you live, you live to the Lord. If you die, you die to the Lord. So whether you live or you die, you belong to the Lord. So no vaccination could prevent you from God's grace and goodness. I'm sorry that my homiletics uh, lecturer might say, no, you're abusing the text there. Perhaps, perhaps. But the point is made. Do you believe the gospel? Uh, Jesus asked Martha, do you believe this? What you are saying to me, do you believe? And I'm telling you about a man who in his stewardship and witness believed. And that's the key. And God will treat us accordingly and hold us to a status because we believe in him and what he has promised to do for us. So I would like to wrap this up by celebrating with our dear brother some of what we were told about his goodness, his love, his high regard. He was a husband of sorts, 65 years, well, we have to say not out if it, if it hadn't been for the matter of the intervention of death. That is not something we hear about or we can look to in the modern scenario. 65 years, good father, great father, great husband. Well, these are not my words, but these are the testimonies that I have received, and I believe them. They make their own statement in regards of the ideals of the church, the ideals of Christian fitness, and uh, comfort, and practice. He was a chemist, a lecturer, a local preacher, and I could go on because I want to tell you he was a man of many careers. And in each career, he sought to give it excellence. Now, I am not querying here whether he got to it or not, you know. I am querying the fact that he set out to attain and to put into place as a disciple that God wants of us. That is what God wants of us. That effort that is so strong that God's grace continues to meet us as we press on to his honor and glory. We, I said already, he loved the church, he loved his Lord, and was not deterred by remarks about his metabolism. You're choosing all those Methodist things. What's wrong with you? Well, that did not interfere with him one bit. Convinced, convicted, on his way to his Lord, sharing in depth that relationship. And if you find me emphatic on that, it is because very often when we look around our church and our practice, we are lacking in emphasis and enthusiasm. 
And I think that is something we can take up from our dear brother. So, as a lay minister, as a disciple, as a priest, as a deacon, determined in his practice of faith, he had a passion for faith and order. And that makes a difference. In all of what I've said, I think, I believe he transitioned peacefully because it was as if he never stopped living the way he thought it should be. And all God knows him in that way. And we receive him in that way. I think that his scientific mind will allow him, allow him to prepare to meet his maker, to set out all the variables in place, to line up the processes, and in the end, to move over to be with his God. He was always striving to increase his knowledge, to increase his craft, to, to know some more, to strengthen his knowledge base and his practice. He would have had disagreements and disappointments with many of us, I suppose. But you know what was good? He was not bitter or vengeful in the end. Wow, a forgiving heart. So by the time I'm saying all this, you think I intend to canonize Sinclair Jones. Well, I have no such authority or power. I am merely pointing out for us all that Sinclair did it and we can do it too. We don't have to look way over anywhere. It was right in front of us, with us, and for us. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we give God thanks for the opportunity and privilege of knowing Him, serving with Him, working with Him. We take pleasure in commending this good and faithful servant into the joy of the Lord. But we are still behind, and we need to look at our own stewardship. We need to look at our relationship with our God and our fellow human beings, and we need to do something about it. I would say, rest well, my brother. God has set us in a high place. Let us aspire and keep to that place. Let us respond positively, and with the assistance of the Holy Spirit and each other, we can attain saved. Rest eternal, grant unto Sinclair, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him, and may he and all the faithful departed, by the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. Let us with confidence and hope Confess the faith into which we were baptized as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, O Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. <coughs> he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
but as the most outspoken of the American grandchildren, it felt important for me to speak today. I'd like to say that memories are a funny thing. We have all spent the past two weeks reliving and sharing memories of granddad. And if you share it in the Jones home, someone is always correcting your story, whether they were present or not. The point being, my memories of granddad sometimes feel unreliable. Do I actually remember the first time granddad showed me a chocolate hiding spot and told me, one for you, one for me? Or is it hearing the story from others that has convinced me of the memory? What I have realized through this experience is that while memories sometimes feel unreliable, the feelings we have about people and what we know about them is more important than the exact memory. Three things I know for sure about Granddad. One, he loves his grandchildren deeply. When my brother spoke at Granddad's 90th, he highlighted all the times, sun, rain, or snow, we live in Pennsylvania, that Granddad showed up to support us and learn more about who we are even though we were across an ocean. Two, he had the best laugh and sense of humor to go with it. I can still see his smile and hear his laugh in my head. He was a man of few words, but if you were lucky or smart enough to listen, you will occasionally hear a joke or comment that will make you roll on the floor with laughter. Three, he was full of contradictions. He was a very devout man, but he would also never miss a WWE Monday Night Raw. He was all that and more. He was a man of content. While there's more, I continue to learn every day through listening to stories, seeing old pictures, and watching videos. What I would take with me is how much I was loved, and when asked if I want cake or ice cream, the answer is yes, because you should always have food. My dad took joy in all things. 
He was an influencer and a connector, not, not a social media influencer as we have today, but a true influencer in people's real lives. He made a difference. You will hear it from his nieces and nephews of two and three generations, the influences that he's had on them. Going forward, as our bishop said, Sinclair did it, we can do it too. And so he will continue to influence our lives in the way we approach our life and our life. Dad connected with people, to it, and that's how he influenced. He, I once had to go change the tire on his car, and the lady there told me my entire life history because he had met with her, he had connected with her, he had shared his life with her, and she had shared his with her. He did that with just about anybody he met and anybody who would listen. Um, he made a difference. We were blessed to have assistance in the last couple weeks of my dad's life. The nurses there influenced him, and he himself influenced them. We are blessed to have had them, and we are also blessed now that they have um, they have blessed all lives, and I believe he has blessed theirs. Finally, a teacher and a learner. He couldn't teach me to play pan, but he did teach me an appreciation for music and for classics. He couldn't teach me to swim, even though he was a baby, but he did teach me to appreciate the beach. He couldn't teach me cricket or football or tennis, but he did teach me to apply myself and to appreciate talent. He couldn't teach me to cheat that, but he has taught me how to appreciate life. But Sinclair wasn't just a teacher, he was an a learner. He evolved, or as the bishop said, he renewed himself continually through his career. Um, as my son put it, he had an eagerness to continue learning and to grow and evolve. When computers became a thing and that became my career, my dad would have a hundred questions for me at the end of the day to learn more about this new technology. Amazed as he was by it, he made sure that he was engaged. When I was doing my master's, uh, I did a course in total quality management. My father came up, and this was in the 80s, I'll date myself. My father came up, took a look through the textbooks and said, wait, this is the physical process of control. I've learned it with a wrapper. I've learned this back in the 50s from Devin. So he came home to Trinidad and wrote a course on total quality management and then shared that through UTT. So he continued to, to learn and to evolve. My dad also evolved in his relationship. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother Sinclair. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for St. Clair and all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May he and all the faithful depart from the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. To him, all I ask of you.
continuing at page 126. Through your goodness, Lord, you have this bread and wine to offer the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord of God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and not required to give you thanks. Father Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of life eternal. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Om E at page 142. For special intention to give God thanks for the life and witness of our dearly departed brother Sinclair and commend him unto his goodness and mercy. To pray for comfort and consolation for the bereaved during this time and following as we adjust to life without the active presence of our dear brother. To pray that the influence and interactions that he shared during his lifetime would lead to and continue to influence positive and active responses to ways of belief and principles and practice. And to give God thanks today for those who raise a hand against trafficking in persons. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom you brought creation into being. In your great love you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit you became the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit at these gifts of bread and wine that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, O Lord and Redeemer. As we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Clair, 
and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. The blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our oh, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Jesus, the Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. The gift of God for the people of God. Why am I There is no life, no life. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and the drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament will be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death neither sorrow nor crime, but the fullness of joy with all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant, St. Clair with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign of life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, form of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, 
and to dust we shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants, and clear with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign of a life everlasting. Let us commend our brothers and clear to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant, Sinclair, O Sovereign Lord of Christ, from all evil, and set him free from every bond, that he may rest with all your saints. In the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, we live and reign one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You could sing a verse and chorus of Into Your Hands.
pay tribute over the unimaginable loss of one of our close and dear friends, Father Sinclair Jones. He and his dear, lovely, devoted, supportive and caring wife, Mrs. Joan Jones, were some of our first friends we made on our arrival to Trinidad, April 1, 1968. I was stationed in the San Fernando Methodist Circuit, now named the South Trinidad Methodist Circuit. At that time, Father Jones was preparing for his Methodist local preacher's accreditation examination. And I was invited by the superintendent, the late Reverend Philip E. M. Saunders, to be his examiner. Many years later, when Father Jones was considering his transition from the Methodist Church to the Anglican Church, he made a telephone call to me, who after his salutations, in his unique jovial style, he informed me that one question I asked him at his orals for his local preachers, local preachers accreditation examination almost derailed him. I did not remember the specific question he was referring to, so he reminded me what the question was, and it was something like this. What is the importance of Paul's letter to Philemon and its value for understanding human relationships and liberation for today? We both laughed, and I must add that at his overall performance was very good, so much so that he passed his examination. He then went on to discuss the reason for his call. It had to do with his intended transition from the Methodist Church to the Anglican Church. He was serious and equally clear as to why such a move was necessary for him. What impressed me about Father Jones was the fact that he was a genuine, outstanding, and committed Christian man who devoted his time to Christ and his church and did not let anything interfere with that commitment at any time, not even while he was serving the Methodist Church as a layman. Over the years I've known Father Jones, I've known him as a hard-working, intelligent, caring, and very thoughtful Christian man, certainly a man who maintained steadfastness in the faith like the saints of old. I remember the wonderful time I spent at his home with his wife. And the time Jones spent time with us in London, England. Vernon and I remember clearly the fellowship moments, the dinners, the laughter, and musical enjoyment. Father Jones lived each day in stride, and being himself was serious when it was necessary, yet always finding time for a joke and therefore simply being pleasant. That was the man we knew over the many years we have known him. He was a wonderful friend and certainly an ardent faithful and committed priest in the Anglican Church from what I've heard. Father Jones was a wonderful husband to his dear wife Joan and a great
great father to their wonderful children. Jennifer, Hayden, Willis, and Becca. Together, he and Joan laid a strong Christian foundation for them. They will always remember and know how much he loved them. Verna extends her deepest sympathy to Joan and family. The President of the Caribbean Conference of Churches, CCC, Dr. Alwakemi Linda Banks of the Anglican Church, His Grace Donald Reese, Archbishop of the Catholic Church, and yours truly, Reverend Dr. Leslie G. Anderson of the Methodist Church, MCC, and Mr. Gerard Granado, CCC's General Secretary, extend our heartfelt condolences to Mrs. Joan Jones, a former president of the CCC, and her children, Jennifer, Hayden, Glynis, and Peter. We, inclusive of the ecumenical community, pray for all of you, as well as your other family relations, and trust that in the face of death, we may all remain steadfast in the faith and find true comfort of heart and peace of mind in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, the conqueror of death and giver of everlasting life. Now our hope is that Father St. Clair Jones may rest in peace in the arms of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as well as in the hearts of those who love him. Farewell, 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 brother and friend, until we meet. A tribute to our brother.
through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother St. Clair, priest in the Church of God, and we commit his body to the flames. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved Son shall come again in, in judgment, both this our brother St. Clair and we ourselves will be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who have finished their course in faith, now, who now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died, in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce, Come, you blessed of my Father, Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and redeemer. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not soaring as those without hope, but in thankfulness, thankful remembrance of your great goodness and the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd like to say a prayer for our family. Hear, Lord, the prayers of your people as we remember before you, St. Clair, our brother, and grant that we who confess your name on earth may with him be made perfect in the kingdom of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Remember, O oh Lord, this your servant, St. Clair, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to him and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you that men are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of your son, St. Clair, priest in the Church of God for the love and mercy he received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we may arise again at the coming of Christ. And, and we ask that in due time we may share with our brother St. Clair that clearer vision when we shall see your face the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord, and let light of thy joy shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him 
and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.
would like to add our Toronto voices to the tributes being paid in celebration of the life of Reverend Father Emmanuel St. Clair Jones. I first met Mr. St. Clair Jones, not yet Reverend Father, about 40 years ago. In today's corporate parlance, he was the COO, the Chief Operating Officer, of a company that had just hired me from outside the country to be its CEO. I was not yet 35 years old and about 20 years younger than Sinclair. Those of you who have had experience of the upper echelons of corporate culture and that a situation like this often means that the knives will be out to undermine the outsider. I was very pleasantly surprised that Sinclair from the very beginning provided me with the support, allegiance, advice and loyalty that I had never even dared to expect, and for which I will be eternally grateful. His family and mine formed a bond that remains to this day, and it is not surprising to me that he became Reverend Father in later years. I became the oldest of the Joneses' children. During my first pregnancy and during my husband's travels at the time, I simply moved into the Joneses' home for sleeping. It became my second home in South Trinidad. On one such sleepover, I watched a scary movie and badly needed to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and was terrified to do so on my own. Somehow, Sinclair heard my call and stood guard outside the bathroom door for me and then accompanied me back to the room as the other girls were asleep. There's so many family stories I could share, but there just isn't enough time. Our daughter soon became the first granddaughter and was thoroughly spoilt by them. Joan, Jennifer, Hayden, Glynis, Bevel, and all of the grands and family and their friends of the Joneses we hope that you're not too sorrowful at this time. Instead, let us celebrate a life well lived. As we pay tribute to Sinclair Jones, a giant who has made this world a better place. Cara and I would like to add our Toronto voice.